Live, local, breaking news. This is WYFF News 4 at 6 in high definition. And good evening, everyone. I'm Michael Cogdell. And I'm Carol Goldsmith. First tonight's summer heat still on, but there are some changes on the way. Let's get right uh, to the man uh, with the word. WYFF News 4 Chief Meteorologist John Sessler is right here. John feels like July right now. Yeah, it certainly does, Michael and Carol. Yeah, it is extremely hot and muggy outside. In fact, of course, for Friday night hits, uh, the high school football games for this evening, warm and muggy conditions, temperatures dropping into maybe the mid 70s by around 10 o'clock this evening, but the heat index will be about 80 degrees. So either way, it's going to be warm and muggy, even though the temperature does drop a little bit. 30% chance of isolated showers with thunderstorms around the area. The best chance really will be in the mountainous areas more than the upstate, only about a 20, 30% chance in the upstate. As you can see on live Super Doppler 4HD, things are quiet now in the upstate, but we could see a little bit of a flow coming off the Atlantic Ocean, a southeast wind. We could see a pop up shower or a heavy thunderstorm developing. As you can see, western North Carolina, North Georgia mountains, that's where most of the showers and thunderstorms are occurring right now. So your headlines head into the weekend quite warm and muggy over the weekend. Then a cold front moves in on Saturday night, especially on Sunday. So we'll see scattered. New, scattered numerous uh, heavy thunderstorms, especially uh, Sunday afternoon into Sunday night with the front itself. The front passes by and we cool down and cooler high pressure builds in for most of next week, especially starting on Sunday afternoon, Sunday night, and through Monday. But also at the same time that front passes by, a low develops along the Carolina coast. And Chris Justice joins us live now from the Weather Center. We've been talking about this for the last several days now, Chris. Maybe something trop tropical developing off the Carolina coast this weekend. John, pretty surprising. This is just kind of formed in the past 24 hours. Here's the view from resortcams.com at Myrtle Beach. A beautiful day out there, but this could soon change in as little as about 36 to 48 hours. Now, looking at the satellite and radar, right here. We are not watching anything that's showing up just yet, but all eyes are going to be on this convection down toward Jacksonville. It looks like a low pressure system higher up in the atmosphere is going to form a low pressure at the surface as we move forward into the next couple of days. That front John just mentioned is going to move on through. We're going to have high pressure built into our area, giving us a cooler and more cloudy northeasterly breeze. What's interesting to watch is this front down toward the south as a low pressure system will ride up along it and could form into a low pressure or a tropical storm that's yet to be determined, but most of the models that we're looking at are saying possibly a tropical storm. Here's the way things look. We've zoomed in to Sunday at 5.30 in the morning just off the coast of Charleston. This is when things start to get interesting. Look as the system moves into the warmer waters of the Gulf Stream about 50 miles offshore of Myrtle Beach. We're talking about a potential tropical depression with winds up to 50 miles per hour. The closest it gets to Myrtle Beach right now on this particular run says 24 mile per hour wind gust. As it moves closer to the outer banks, looks like wind gusts get up to around 50 to even 60 miles per Hour. This is something that changes from model run to model run, and this could impact us as soon as 24 hours. So, Chief Meteorologist John Sesters will have much more on his forecast coming up in just a few minutes. All right, gentlemen, thank you both. Now, to a developing story we've been watching all afternoon. A plane based in the United States has crashed into the ocean north of Jamaica, and that aircraft had an unresponsive pilot who had flown more than 1,400 miles. We just learned a prominent real estate developer and his wife were aboard, Larry and Jane Glazer. For both licensed pilots, air traffic control lost contact with the pilot about an hour after takeoff from Rochester, New York. The plane was ostensibly headed to Naples, Florida. U.S. fighter jets were scrambled. They followed the plane until it reached Cuban airspace. That's when they peeled off. The Jamaican military has sent a plane to the crash site tonight. Of course, more on all this right after this broadcast here on the NBC Nightly News. Happening right now, the annual First Friday Parade is underway in Clemson, and we are just hours away from the first home game of the season. WIFF News 4's Mandy Gaither live and local in Clemson tonight. Mandy, the parade started what, just minutes ago? Yeah, it did, and a lot of people are here getting very excited. It's starting down behind me at the president's house. We'll come down the street here in front of Bowman Field and end up past the soccer stadium down the street from me. And this is just one thing that fans have to look forward to this season. In mere hours, more than 80,000 fans are expected to fill Memorial Stadium as the Clemson Tigers take to their own field for the first time this season. You just want to scream because it's like so exciting. A new season means new upgrades in Death Valley, the biggest of which may not even be noticed. These aren't just flagpoles at the top of the stadium, but part of a $10 million upgraded antenna system from Verizon, which should help fans in every section get a better cell signal. There's also a new graphics package designed by people in Clemson. For example, when we score a touchdown, um, Jordan just hits the touchdown button. And as you can see, 
touchdown is going up on every video board here in the stadium. Clemson Assistant Athletics Director Mike Money says the video board will be used to interact with fans, posting some tweets and messages when hashtag Clemson Family is put at the end of a message. The concession stand will also see upgrades, credit cards will now be accepted at all of them, and barbecue is now on the menu. Gate one will also look a little different. As you can see, it's been expanded down almost twice the size. Uh, this is where all of our students come in, and this area backs up, especially as we start getting close to game time. So, what we've done here is going to alleviate the problem. And for a list of all 14 upgrades at Memorial Stadium, you can go to our website, wyff4.com. You'll find a link there in the on TV section. And back here live, giving you a view of the 40th annual First Friday Parade from Sky 4. You can see the parade is starting to get underway. It's taking a little while to get to us, of course, uh, but the crowd is growing as fans turn out to celebrate the first home football game of the season. Student organizations march in this parade, and the Grand Marshal is none other than the new Clemson University president, James Clements. After the parade, there's a pep rally here on Bowman Field so that fans can get pumped for the game, which kicks off tomorrow at 12:30. Mandy Gaither, WYFF News 4, live in Clemson. See you from Sky Forest, getting there, Mandy. Stay tuned. Uh, Bilo Friday Night Hits returns for another week of high school football. Thousands of you weighed in, voted for our game of the week, said we should send our own Mark Dofer to the contest between Westside and BHP, and so Maestro, there he is. Mark is live in Honey Path to kick off Week Two coverage. Mark, that'll be good. Yeah, it ought to be a good, good game and another hot night for high school football. When I got down to Honeypath this afternoon, about 95 degrees down here. So, again, you'll see a lot of those water breaks throughout the game between Westside and BHP. A good matchup between the Rams and the Bears. Both teams undefeated in the preseason. We'll have more on that game, or excuse me, undefeated in the early part of the season. We'll have more on that game coming up in sports. Let's talk about some of the other good matchups that you're going to see tonight around the area. We start with Greenwood at Dorman. This is a matchup between two perennial powers, these teams in the playoffs. Each and every season, and always gunning for a state title. Union County is at Spartanburg. The Vikings looking for their first win of the season after losing a heartbreaker in week zero. Christchurch is at Eastside. This is a 1A 3A matchup, but remember, the Cavaliers are riding that state record 42 game winning streak. And Greer at Riverside, both teams 1 0, and that's a big deal for the Warriors. Last week, they snapped a 19 game losing streak. We'll see if Riverside can keep rolling. In week two. Coming up a little bit later in sports, we're going to talk more about Westside and BHP, the Rams and the Bears. The Bears boss will be with us. Russell Blackston, the head coach of BHP, will join us live coming up in sports. We're live in Honey Path. Mark Dill for WYFF News 4. Thanks, Mark. Police in Gaffney have arrested three people in connection with a violent shoplifting case. This is surveillance video from last Thursday at the Polo store at the Gaffney Premium Outlets. Police say a woman carrying a child walked into the store with another woman. And then a woman with a dog in her purse walked in with a man. Well, according to a report, the group filled two tote bags with clothes and left the store. Police say an employee followed the thieves to get their license plate number, and that's when the man shot at him once. Kashima Sierra Thomas, Kevin Bryant Thomas, and Joy D. Morris are in custody tonight. All three are charged with armed robbery and attempted murder. A fourth, Yvonne Marie Bowick, is still on the loose. A school district employee in Spartanburg stands accused of embezzlement tonight. Police say Thomas Lee Myers misappropriated school funds and misused school property for his own benefit. We're told it happened while he was working at Spartanburg School District 7. According to the warrant, between May 11th and July 14th, Myers took money from people who wanted to use Duncan Park Stadium. Police say he never deposited that money into the district's account. The Anderson County coroner says speed was a factor in a wreck that killed a man. The crash happened just before 9.30 last night on Snow Road and U.S. 29 North in Anderson County. The coroner says Stephen Anthony Hurt ran off the right side of the road and hit a telephone pole. He died. Hurt was 24 years old. A passenger was taken to the hospital. The coroner says Hurt crashed just three-tenths of a mile from his home. A hospital security guard is facing charges tonight after deputies say he stole from a patient. Oconee County deputies charge William Zachariah Poole with grand larceny. He turned himself in on Thursday. They say he was working as a security guard at Oconee County Medical Center when he stole $2,900 from a patient back in June. Deputies say the money had fallen on the ground while the patient's friend was taking belongings out of a vehicle. The Good Samaritan found the money and turned it into the security office, but the money disappeared. Deputies later determined Poole had taken the money out of the safe.